Hey, as you all know, I'm a big proponent of keeping Justin Fields as a Chicago Bear and building around him specifically. But with that being said, I want to do this right. I want to cover all sides of this offseason, and I'd be remiss to ignore the possibility of not only trading fields, but also the possibility of actually getting a haul in the process. So let's let's explore this. I'm saying there is a world that we could definitely get as much as a first round pick. That's right, a first round pick in exchange for him once the league year starts on March 13th. You can push back on this, and I know you will. Adam Schefter had some things to say, and I'm referencing a heavy.com story. I know, as you guys know, I always give credit where credit's due, so it's important if you want to check this story out. Uh, you can push back on this too, <laughs> and I know you will, but Adam Schefter, he agrees with this thought, so let's explore it. During his February 6th, guest appearance, Schefter told ESPN Chicago's Waddle and Sylvie that he expects the Bears to use the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft to select a new quarterback. Presumably, that's USC's Caleb Williams. Of course, that's a consensus opinion. And he also said that this likely means the team will look to trade fields elsewhere, even though his market could be, quote, limited. Here's what Shafti had to say. I think it'll be limited to a certain extent, but it really doesn't matter if it would be limited because if there were just a couple teams interested, and I think there could be, then that's all it takes to drive the market up. Schefter, once again, he told the radio host about interest in fields. So in a vacuum, you could definitely say, no way this happens for a first. Sean, you're crazy. But the main rule of economics is that what something is worth is dictated directly by what someone's willing to pay. And all it takes is multiple teams willing to bid on them. And that elevates the market to possibly getting a first. And it's definitely possible you can't argue with that. Waddell and Sylvie also asked Shefty whether he believes the Bears can get a second round pick in exchange for a field. Fields, his colleague, uh, Courtney Cronin, Jeremy Fowler, Fowler, they wrote in January that the consensus in an informal poll of league evaluators is that Fields would be worth a second or a third round pick in a pre-draft trade. So let's explore that. I mean, that's well and good. But it's February now. This was back in January. And as the offseason continues to pick up steam, I think this market is going to possibly heat up as well. And Shefty, however, he seems more certain that Fields could net Chicago a second rounder. Definitely, he said. Definitely. But I also think they might get a one. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I want to stop here for a second and say something, though. I don't believe either way is 100%. I don't think it can be predicted right now, not by a long shot. This front office has this completely under wraps, and I love that. But the only way I believe trading fields is a possible pivot, the only way that I am uh, in favor of it, is if we insist on a first-round pick and multiple teams should have interest. This isn't fake news, guys. This can happen. So when could the Bears make a decision on fields? The Bears haven't decided to trade Justin Fields just yet, but that appears to be what most of, NF, most of the NFL expects them to do in the coming months before the 2024 draft. Schefter previously said as well on the Pat McAfee show that feelings around the league seem to be that they'll definitely wind up trading Justin. Bears insider Brad Biggs, he also wrote that he spoke with five NFL general managers at the Senior Bowl, and their resounding answer about Chicago's quarterback dilemma is that they expect them to draft a new one. So realistically, when is the optimal time to do this? If that's the plan, and I said if, let's explore this. One way, just model last year, right? Chicago traded the number one of Carolina about a week before the start of the league year in March. The big venue for getting this done is the combine, right? The underwear Olympics that's starting in just a couple of weeks, regardless of rules, regardless of what's going on teams. They definitely talk as they gather here on the down low. The reasoning is that we need to get ahead of the free agent market to get his max value. We've got some other veteran options that would be starters or bridge quarterbacks that are going to go on the market once the league year starts. Uh, guys like Kirk Cousins, right? Uh, Ryan Tannehill, Baker Mayfield. I think Mayfield will most likely head back to Tampa, but we've also got like a wild card like wild card like Gardner Minshew. I mean, unbelievably, he was in the Pro Bowl this year, but um. <laughs> Let's just move on. 
Fields. He appeals to teams like Atlanta that believe they're just a quarterback away and also teams that are ready to take a chance on the young quarterback but have the belief they can coach the best ball out of him. I mean, that's Fields to a T. To my to not make him available to do that, to not make him available. If this is our course of action early in the process, you could have teams that would have been in the sweepstakes to, ins to instead grow impatient and choose a veteran on the market. So they're hedging their bets. So everything's covered. So they know ahead of time what's happening. They would be wise to commit to a course of action and get it moving as early as possible. This is the wise course of action by the bears. If we're doing this also, Let's not forget we have a crafty GM, and it's possible he could have a plan in place already that would still allow him to trade fields during the draft, but conventional wisdom dictates something that the deal done ahead of time would yield the best results. And we can always only talk about definites, right? I mean, the trade of Carolina, that was unprecedented for the reason that it was done so early in the process. That was very unusual to do it that early in the year, and uh, it seems to be the MO of polls as well. If you look back at uh, free agent signings last year, we made those signings immediately, the big ones. The second free agency started. Polls, he has a plan. He works promptly. He works quickly. And he puts it into place quickly and decisively. So let's, let's finish up here. Let's kind of talk about who the favorites are to trade for Justin Fields. We agree he's going to have a trade market. I argue that the trade market can lead to a number one. And that's the way that the only way that I'm a proponent of doing this. And still, that's a stretch. But the question is which teams are going to make an offer for him? Who's going to be in the sweepstakes for him? Here's what the ads are, the odds are, <laughs> excuse me. And this is according to DraftKings Sportsbook. You can actually bet on this. Um, this is what they say about Fields' next team. Right now, the Bears are an odds-on favorite to keep them. That's at plus 100 to have Fields on the roster for the 2024 season. The Atlanta Falcons are next with plus 140 odds. They're not far behind. The Falcons have been a popular, like, hypothetical landing spot for Fields. He has connections to the state. They have a desire to plug a quarterback into a talented passing offense already. They've got to believe that they're just a quarterback away, and they've been trying to plug mobile quarterbacks into that spot. They have a chance of getting Fields that they know exactly what they're getting. Plus, they have a mobile quarterback now that's actually good. Um, the only other pivot to a more experienced player uh instead of going the draft and trading up and all these scenarios they could also be in the sweepstakes for russell russell wilson i'm not sure how strong the market's going to be for him but if he can choose between justin fields more at the beginning of his career and russell wilson you can probably get fields for cheaper as far as a contract and all of these things that the bears are offering him i think going to atlanta it makes the most sense. We also have the Las Vegas Raiders. They're getting the next best odds behind the Falcons, and that's with uh, Kingsbury spurning them and going to the Washington, uh, not Redskins, Commanders. Uh, we're also looking at like the Seattle Seahawks. I think a lot of that is due to the Waldron ties. They're at plus 750. Pittsburgh Steelers, they are likely to get into the fray if this happens. And also we've got the New England Patriots. There are some people in the mainstream media that are suggesting that New England does a draft day trade for Fields, um, that they trade that high pick. I think that's very unlikely, but um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. That's kind of like the top five non-Bears options who could potentially target him. I think it's a really interesting situation, and it is a good situation to be us. We have so many pivots, and I just wanted to walk through what it might look like trading fields. I don't have to tell you guys to comment. I don't have to tell you guys to give your opinion. You give it freely. I absolutely love that. I am convinced that I have the best viewers on in all of YouTube. You guys are fantastic and so supportive.